guys, this is Coding Cleverly with a new video. Today's video's topic is about STL maps, the standard template library support for the maps. So the we're gonna get a basic insight of how this STL is gonna work and we're gonna be talking about maps. So maps are an associative container that store elements in a mapped fashion. Now a map fashion would have something like a key and a value pair. So each element has a key value and a mapped value. So another uh, important concept to note here is that the maps will have unique keys. So you'll have different keys, but the values could be same. So you'll understand all of this stuff once we start writing the code. Okay. Here I have my boilerplate code already written for me. So the only thing I'm gonna be starting out with is how to basically write this map thingy. So map is like this, so map. And what we wanna do is we wanna create some kind of type for it. So let's think of a map. So we could have two types for it. One is gonna be the, called the key and the other is gonna be called the value. Now let's say we have roll number and to the roll number we have uh, names. So the roll number could be an int and then we put a comma right there and then we could have the names and that could be in a string. So there you go, a map and then there's uh, these angle brackets and inside I put two data types, one for the key and one for the value. They're separated by a comma and now all I have to do here is now create my map by just naming it, the identifier. So I'll just call mine called as my map. So pretty simple here, semicolon at the end. And the only thing I'll have to include is basically the map. So hash include MAP. And now how am I gonna insert stuff to this is pretty simple. So I'm gonna call it my map. I could just go and t specify the key. So this is the first key. So suppose that we have roll number one and the roll number one could have a name. So we could call this as Sam. And then we could have my map and we would have roll number two. So this one will be called as Joe, right there. So we could create another one, my map, and let's call it as three. And then what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna assign this as, let's say, Willie. So we have here three different key value pairs. We have one for the key, which is one, and then we have the value, which is a string. So what I could do here is I could iterate through and I could show you the content of this. For that, I could use an iterator. And if you guys didn't watch my iterators video, there's gonna be a card on the top right corner. So go check that out before diving into this video. And now what we're gonna do is applying an iterator. So iterators are pretty simple. Just get this part, which is right here. Just copy this and we'll just go and paste it here. And I'm just gonna put the scope resolution operator and I'm just gonna write the keyword iterator. So I know I didn't uh, spell it right. So iterator is right here. And now what I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna name it, so I could just name it ITR as a convention. And I could use a for loop to iterate through my content. So I could say iterator and, and I could start it with the beginning. So I could say my map and I say the begin and over here we just basically put that and I put a semicolon right here, iterator not equal to the my map end and then we could just have a semicolon and we say iterator plus plus and there you go so right here and what i could do here is just console output and we know that we used to do something like this basically a dereferencing operator and use the keyword iterator but in this case it's not going to work and let's just run this code and show you what i mean over here so i'm going to go here and i'm going to type in cmd i'm going to go here and type in g plus plus stl so stl um stl hyphen maps and dot cpp and when I run it, you can see that there are a bunch of errors. And what's the reason behind all of this is that the map has two kind of components that we have to talk about. So let's just go back here in the code and let's show you that the iterator selection is not proper. So that for the iterator selection, what you have to do is you have to include the asterisk ITR, but there's gonna be a, an additional to that. So we'd have a first, and then it would have a space, and then we'd have an asterisk, ITR, and we'll have this as well. So um, there you go. And then we'd have some kind of second over here. And I'm not making this up. This is actually, you could keep a, a hand as this is the key, and this is the value. So the first one is known as the key, and the second one is known as the value. You know, if I run this code now, so go back here, and let's just run this code. So over here, I'm just gonna, Compile this and there you go. 
there you see that it's compiled successfully and once I run it you can see all right roll number one Sam roll number two Joe and roll number three Willie that's crazy it's working so now it's working so this is how it's going to be applying. Uh, all right, so now the other thing that we're going to be applying here is that uh, let's insert stuff to this. And there's a keyword that we could use for my maps. So I'm just going to go here. So we could add stuff to the map using the dot insert method. So dot insert method. And what it could require, and we can just add something is called the initializer list. And we can just put stuff inside of it. So we need a roll number, and then we can just space it out with the thing what we need. So let's see a string, and we'll say a name. So the roll number will be four, and the name could be something, let's say, um, Patrick. And now we could just put this again, and inside of here, we'll say five, and we'll say, let's say Caleb. So Caleb is right here and we'll put a semicolon at the end. So now when I run this code, you'll see that Caleb and Patrick will be included in my map. So let's go back here and just run this code. So I ran the code and there you go. We have Sam, Joe, Willie, Patrick and Caleb all included in my map. That's awesome. So now what we want to do is we could explore. There are so many methods. You, there are there for you to explore and my job here is to just simplify the ones that are very very basic and the ones that are often used so it could take a pretty long time to explain all of them but my job here is to simplify things so the next thing what i want to try to explain are some of the other methods that uh might come in handy so let's say we want a size so we say the size of the map and we could just basically say my map dot size and when we, when we run this we'll have the size of it similarly to this we'll have the maximum size so let's say maximum size maximum size of the map so if we want the maximum size of the map it would give us that how much it could hold the capacity for the map how much content it could hold and you'll see that it's a it's going to be a really big number so my map dot i would say max underscore uh, size so We'll put an end line here. And then we have another method that I wanted to explore is the empty function. So uh, is the uh, map empty? So of course it's not empty. I, I added five elements inside of it, key value pairs. So uh, if I add this my map dot empty, it's just gonna show me that it's false, meaning it's gonna show zero that it's stuff. So it's not empty, it's false. So it's supposed to return false. So it's supposed to return zero here. Um, over here, the maximum size will show some kind of big number. And over here, the size will show five because there's five key value pairs which are added manually. So now what we're gonna do is run the code once again. So G++, compiling it successfully. Now let's run the code and there you go. So the Sam, Joe, Willie, Patrick, Caleb, the size of the map is five. The maximum size of the map is, wow, that's a big number. Actually, it's 48,806,446 pairs. That's crazy. And then what else we have is the, is the map empty. What's well, zero, meaning it's false. It's, there is stuff inside of it. And that's pretty much it with this video. Thanks a lot. Hope you understood the concept and I hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one. Bye.